Hi, welcome to our stats. I'm Jacob Sibulski. In this series of videos, I'm going to introduce you to some predictive statistical models, such as naive base and regression, with plenty of data visualization. Hi, welcome back to our stats. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about naive base classifiers and compare them to KNN. Uh, naive base classifiers are very simple statistical predictive models. I'm going to use the same data as in the previous lessons, and it's uh, the data about local government areas in Victoria, Australia, from the Australian Department of Health and Human Services. Let's get into it. Let's start with setting a working directory and install or activate a number of packages, uh, some of them to run naive base classification, uh, some to do some very informative uh, correlation charts, and a package to plot um, or to provide a report on accuracy of, um, of my classifiers. So we're going to read the data about the local government areas, the names, um, the level of crime, people's social engagement via social media, amount of uh, sitting people do, especially those over seven hours, uh, percent of people feeling safe walking alone in that area, the level of people education, especially high education, percentage of people reporting high blood pressure, percentage of people with poor dental health, uh, the number of available deaths, which I'm going to slightly um, transform to standardize it because it's not a percentage, it's just a raw number of available deaths, and the number of GPs per 1,000 of population. It's a small number, so I'm not going to do anything about it. And percentage of people with adequate work and life balance as they reported, self-reported themselves. So let's create a data frame out of those raw variables and have a very pretty chart. Let's make it larger. Uh, this chart, um, it, it's really very informative. On a diagonal, you have all variable histograms. Uh, in the left bottom corner, you can see the spread of data um, and also the fitting line uh, into the data. You can see that if there's linear dependency between variables or not. And the top right corner, you have correlations between those variables. So everything is here. It's one of my favorite diagrams to, to show variable dependency. Um, you don't have any, we don't see any major problem with, um, with those variables. The correlations are reasonable. Uh, some of them are perhaps too high, especially for avoidable deaths against sitting and high blood pressure. But let's see what happens. So, first of all, I'm going to make a categorical variable um, which will be used to define a class for my observations based or around the variables are selected. Um, naive base classif classification method, uh, it requires a categorical variable as the target. And previously, we looked at uh, the breaks in the histogram of well-being variable and we actually found those two points which could delineate between low, medium and high level of well-being. And that's what we use using even else statement. So now I'm going to make a, a data frame which picks all of the predictors as well as a target uh, classification variable. Now I'm going to split the data into part to be used for training and part to be used for validation. I'm going to set the seed, and the seed actually it's a, it starts the, the random process to be used in sampling, which is, this is the function which actually relies on 
randomness in the system and if we want to improve what we're doing then we better start from the same point every time otherwise we don't know whether uh, things change because we split it differently or things change because we improved the classifier so we use the seed we identify the size of the whole sample which we use 79 observation 79 local government areas the training size sample will be 0.7 70 percent and the validation size is the rest 30 percent now what we do is actually we draw a sample of indices into a data frame so um, how did it work basically we indicated that out of sequence of 1 to 79 we want a sample of much smaller sample which is the number of items to be used in training and now I can actually retrieve the sample from the whole data frame and retrieve another sample from the validation okay so it's a bit of magic but it happens very very quickly it's very useful I can now build a classifier naive, na naive base classifier and the way it happened is that I used the subset of my data frame excluding the classification variable because it's being passed as a separate argument into the naive base I'm also using Laplace index which uh, increases um, the values of observed um, uh, of observed variable classes um, basically that's to, to avoid the situation when some observations have never been made and if that's so then probability of some new observation as belonging to that class would be zero and that's due to the calculations of a condition, conditional probability used in comp computation of naive base um, method. The classifier itself is simply a, a collection of frequency tables for each variable used in this process and those frequency tables are then used to calculate the probability of any previously unseen uh, observation uh, to be predicted to belong to a certain class okay so prediction was uh, it's simply a vector of high low medium values which is the well-being classification we can actually see that um, in something known as the confusion matrix where the columns are the predictions whereas rows are known facts so what we try to do is that uh, we actually compare um, the results of the classification automatic classification beneath base classifier against what we already know the validation data it already had those observations classified so we could check did it work or not and agreement uh, the classification versus reality is the diagonal anything else is misclassification and we could quickly calculate that what is the percentage of accurately predicted values and that's 46 percent is it good well if it were a completely random process we had three values in a target variable that means most likely would be 33 percent so it's a little bit better but it's far from good uh, if you use the uh, confusion matrix function um, which I already loaded from the carrot package it gives you slightly more information yep it still says accuracy is around 46 percent but also tells us kappa it's a statistic which um, it's similar to accuracy but it's adjusted to take into consideration the 
um, the spread of data across all variables, the distribution of all variables. So Kappa is more pessimistic and basically it says that um, this accuracy has to be done because in some variables we have a lot more values, the, especially the safe variable is skewed and so a lot more data is sitting on the right hand side of the range and therefore the Kappa is low here. Okay, what can we do about this poor performance? The first thing we can do is to play with the variables. Uh, we thought safe variable, feeling safe, is perhaps not good, perhaps to skew it. Uh, let's eliminate it and try to run it again. So we have the seed, the size, split the data, create a classifier, find the predictions, draw the table, calculate 54%, a bit better, yep, 54 and the kappa increased. So that's a bit better than 46, it's still not very good. Can we do anything else? Now, how about we try to move the boundaries in the classification variable? Um, if we actually start plotting and investigating the values and the spread, then perhaps um, we should adjust that variable. And again, let's try to run it again, the same seed. So we could compare one run against the other, splitting a data set, getting predictions, drawing tables. Okay, it looks like in this case not much changed. Perhaps we should not be applying two changes at the same time. So let's go back to the previous set of variables and do it again, seed, splitting the sample, creating the classifier, working out the predictions, um, plotting the table. Well, I can see I'm getting some better results here. It's nearly 67% and the kappa has improved. Uh, not much, but it has. Now, 67% of accuracy doesn't mean we can deploy it in practice. Um, in my view, let's start looking for other alternatives. Uh, one of them would be to use a KNN classifier and use exactly the same data for K equal 3 and the confusion matrix says accuracy is only 25%. How about we increase K to 10? Would that make much difference? Indeed, uh, accuracy increased to 54% it's still terrible, the kappa is very low. So in this case, KNN is not as good as naive base. Um, should we be happy? Um, no. The problem is here. We started the seed 2016. How about if we change it to 2000? Would it make any difference in this process? Everything is the same. We use the same data, but different random seed and the data is split, split differently between training and validation. Same size, different observations went to different places. Okay, so now from 67% accuracy dropped to 58% and kappa stayed the same and that's interesting, uh, 36% so um, things change just because we pick different random seed. What does it mean? It means that we should be more thorough than simply splitting randomly once and hoping for the best. Uh, one way of addressing the problem is to use a library caret where uh, the split of data is done uh, in a cross-validation process. That means like in this particular case I use just any random seed, let's say 2000, as we've done a moment ago. Um, we define the way the data is going to be split into 10 lots. That means nine of those lots will be used for <coughs> training, one of them to be used for validation, and they'll be repeated three times. And we could now apply to naive base model. So naive base model was magically ran um, three times and here's the result. The accuracy is 53%, kappa 22. 
Now, if we change the C to something else, would it make any difference? Hopefully not much. Let's do it quickly. It's still running. It's 55%, so it's not a huge drastic uh, change. Let's do more repeats than that. Let's run it um, nine times with that seed, so it will be much slower. As you can see, the red dot stays on. and we actually got 55 percent so um, what we get we get more realistic results here we don't have this highly optimistic results for 67 percent accuracy um, that's because cross-validation is a much better way of judging the model performance so which one is better um, we don't know it all depends on the data um, if you look at um, the data itself, perhaps we should be looking for a different set of variables. Perhaps we should use it for a different model, maybe a regression model, which we're going to discuss next in the next lesson. Um, there's a few comments here. If you wondered um, what was the function subset, um, check your help. And here is a few statements you could execute and figure out what happens. And also, we could have used some of the categorical variables which were available in the data, uh, such as remoteness of some local government area, uh, place of birth, or the language spoken at home. They could make a difference, but we would have to use them differently. Uh, naive base classifier takes both categorical and numerical values. Um, other classifiers don't. So, there are benefits and there are problems. So, thank you for listening to this um, talk and um, I invite you to the next lesson on regression modeling.